So the first thing we're gonna walk through, guys, is the controls of a manual car. It's pretty damn simple, really. You have your steering wheel, your gear stick, uh, your handbrake or e-brake. Uh, you have your throttle pedal, your brake pedal, and your clutch pedal. Now, when you're getting used to the car, you want to use your right foot on the throttle pedal, the right foot on the brake, and your left foot on the clutch pedal. It seems pretty basic, and I know some of you guys will be going, oh, I know this already, but there's some people that don't, so I'm gonna walk through everything about the car and just get you used to everything you need to know before you start moving. So when you get in the car, the first thing you're gonna need to adjust is your driving position. Adjusting your driving position is different on every car. To adjust the seat on my car, there is a lever under the seat, which when you pull it up, you can then move the seat forwards or backwards. Pretty simple as that. The driving position you wanna aim for should be where you can put the clutch pedal all the way in um, and still have your knee very slightly bent. So if your knee is too straight like this, um, or it is tucked way up against the steering wheel, uh, then your steering, your driving positions are wrong. So you want your knee to be slightly bent <clears throat> so you have as much control over the pedal as you can. Your arms should be slightly bent too and when you put your hand on top of the steering wheel you should have a slight kink in your arm. It shouldn't be straight all the way out, it shouldn't be right up against, you shouldn't be sitting like a granny. <laughs> so, slight bend in your arms, slight bend in your leg, and you have around about the rough driving position. And when you sit in the car, it, it should just feel comfortable, right? It should feel natural, comfortable. You don't have to look cool, don't worry. It's comfort first, boys, comfort first. So, now that you've got your driving position right, you want to know a bit about the gears. So, on most cars, you will have either five gears or six gears. Keep in mind that before you do anything with the gearbox, or you change any gears, you need to put in the clutch pedal. So your clutch needs to go all the way in and then you can change gears. Even when the car's off, make sure you've got the clutch pedal in because otherwise you could damage the gearbox. So, on a standard car like mine, which has a five speed gearbox, clutch in remember, all the way in, you will have gear one, <clears throat> which is to the top, to the left and up. You got gear two, which is to the left and down. Gear three, which is the gear stick to the center, let it return to the center. So go from second, let it go up and return to the center and then push straight up, that's third gear. And then fourth gear is straight down from third. And then fifth gear is push the gear stick up to the right and up, like so. So you've got first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And then some cars will have a sixth gear as well, which you pull down to the right. Now sometimes you need to put the car in neutral and that means when you haven't engaged any gears at all and that is in the middle. To tell you're in neutral uh, you can simply waggle the gear stick from side to side and feel that it's got a play in it. For example if you're in first gear you wouldn't be able to waggle the gear stick side to side much at all but in the center you can. The best thing to do to get used to the gearbox is sit in your car whilst you're not moving and just put the clutch in and get used to the gears. So go from first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and back again. Go fourth, third, second, first. Just play around, get used to the gears, and even go into reverse, which is different on every car, but on my car, you push the gear stick down and then over and up towards first, and you'll know it's in reverse because it's sort of down and it feels different to first gear as well. This is first gear, that is reverse, so you can feel the difference. Gears on every car are fairly similar, though there will be slight differences per car, so check on the little indicator on top of your car before you, before you drive it for the first time, just to see where your gears are, uh, and where reverse is, that's normally different in each car. The first thing you do before you start the car is either make sure the car's in neutral or press in the clutch. The best thing to do is always press in the clutch when you start the car. It's a good habit to get into and that means if it's in gear and you start it, your engine is disengaged from your transmission so you will not jerk away violently into the distance. So nothing scary is going to happen, it's just going to start every time and then you can make sure it's out of gear and take off the clutch. When you're sitting in the car, put the key in the ignition and turn it one click to the right. This will get all the electrics going, as you can see. Uh, all the lights will start coming up. Your radio might come on. And what you gotta do is make sure you've got your clutch in and your car is out of gear. If your clutch is in, your car doesn't have to be out of gear, but it's good practice to keep the car in neutral. As you can see, the little diagram tells you 
where the gears are, where it reverses. And then once you've got the clutch in, all the way to the floor, and you have got the car out of gear, you can turn the ignition and start the car. And just like that, your car's on. Make sure it's out of gear, and then you can take your foot off the clutch. So once your car is started, um, you can start to think about getting moving. So, the one thing people get scared about when they're learning to drive is the clutch pedal. That's this pedal on the left. Um, it's a sort of medium weight pedal, and in my car it's got a fairly long throw. And it's a pedal which gets progressively harder to push as it goes towards the center, and then gets easier when you push it to the floor. And this bit in the middle that you can just play around with, that is the biting point, and you'll hear a lot about the biting point from driving instructors and everything like that. It's the point where, when your car's in gear, your engine engages with the transmission and you will start to move. All the clutch does is link your engine to your wheels. That is as simple a term as I can make it. It links the engine to your wheels. If you put the clutch in, your engine will no longer be driving your wheels and you won't be you and it won't power you forwards. Also, seatbelt. Put on your seatbelt. Make sure you got this on because you're gonna get stopped and you'll be safe as well. So no police and you won't be going through the windscreen. <laughs> so once the engine's running and you are ready to move. The first thing you want to do is get used to the biting point of the clutch. This is something that people get scared about. Seriously, don't worry about the clutch. You will get used to it in no time at all. If you take a little bit longer as well, don't fret. That's, that's the nice thing about taking it to a big open area because you can stall as many times as you want uh, and you can just practice. That's the best thing to do. One of the things I would have wanted to have known when I was learning is that when you're releasing the clutch, you can keep your heel on the floor and keeping your heel on the floor gives you more control over the sensitivity of your clutch. You see a lot of people when they're learning to drive sort of lurch down the road because they can't release the clutch smoothly enough and balance it with the throttle at the same time. So, keep your heel on the floor, dug into the, dug into the mat. As you can see on my mat, there's like a mark. There's a mark on the mat where I put my heel, uh, and that's the point where I keep it there. And then when I'm pulling away, you can kind of slide your heel backwards whilst keeping it on the floor and moving your, <clears throat> and moving your leg back. If you just use your leg, you have a lot more power but you don't have the sensitivity, so you tend to release it too fast, and then you'll put it back in, and it'll get messy really quickly. That's something I wish I'd have known when I was learning to drive, because it's something that uh, you don't realize, and then it just, it just clicked for me. Like, I was struggling to be really smooth with the clutch, and then as soon as I keep my heel on the floor and use it to slide backwards, then I was way smoother and a lot more controlled. So if you're on a flat area and the car's not rolling, put the clutch in, put the car into first, which is to the left, and up to the top. And then what you can do is add a little bit of throttle and just hold it. It doesn't have to be much throttle at all. It can be just a little tiny bit. So you can hear the revs of the engine start to pick up, then slowly release the clutch and you'll feel the car start to bite and it'll start to pull forwards. Then release the handbrake if you have it on. Keep the car at the biting point with your heel on the floor. Slowly re release it out when you start moving and you start moving. It's literally as easy as that. When you want to stop, put on the brake, slow down gently, and then when you start to slow down, clutch in, and you've come to a stop. When you've uh, come to a stop, make sure uh, to put the car back into neutral, give it a waggle, and then you can put the clutch out, handbrake up, and you have done it. There's your first 10 feet in your car. Be proud, be proud. You can try this as many times as you want if you find a big open space to practice in. Just try putting the clutch in, first gear, a little bit of revs, clutch slowly out until it bites, keep the clutch at the biting point, keep it there, and then clutch out, and then there you go, you're moving. Keep practicing that until you have it down, and you will be a professional in no time. Don't worry about how many times it takes you to get good at releasing the clutch. That is something that will come with time, I promise you. It's... So once you've got the car moving and you're comfortable with getting the car started and stopped in first gear, the next thing you want to do is move on to changing gears and doing it smoothly. So, when you're stationary, you can practice changing gears. You can go from first, keep the clutch in, don't release it, to second, to third, and just get used to those gears and, and uh, how they feel. And then when you want to practice them, simply do what you were doing earlier, 
slowly with your heel in the floor, release the clutch with a little bit of throttle, make sure the handbrake is off, and then what you can do is find an area to get up to a little bit of speed and put the clutch in, second gear, release the clutch and get back on the power. As easy as that. If you want to go up to third gear, a little bit more speed, clutch in, third gear, clutch out. Whenever you change gear, you want to make sure that you are putting the clutch in and releasing the throttle too. You don't want any power when you're changing gear. If anything goes wrong, you're going too quickly, um, you launch the car too fast, all you need to do, put the clutch back in and your engine won't be powering the wheels anymore. When you're building up speed, say on my car you get up to around 2,500, 3,000 RPM, you can hear the engine start to get busy. To release the throttle, put the clutch in, put the car into second gear, release the clutch and get back on the throttle. If you're in your open area again, you can just practice going from first, uh, first to second, in the third and you know the fourth and fifth gear are a very similar story just in different positions fourth and fifth gear they're not hard to get used to but when you're driving if you need to go down a gear the very basics of of downshifting a car and going down a gear are so so if you're in third gear and need to go into second you will put the clutch in Put the car into second and then very gently release the clutch. You want to take your time, keep your heel in the floor and you are down a gear. There are better ways of doing this, but we will go over these later on. But that's the simple gist of it. You put your car in, if you want to go from third to second gear or fourth to third, all you do is put the clutch in, go down into that gear and very gently release the clutch and you will go down the gear. There, like I said, there are better ways of doing this and there's a technique called rev matching which will allow you to save your clutch um, and be a lot better on the car and be faster as well. So, you've got the car started and you're getting the basics of changing gear. You are almost there. So when you first start driving, there might be a few habits you will accidentally pick up uh, and one of these is riding the clutch. Whenever you hear people talking about riding the clutch, that means when they rest their foot on top of the clutch whenever the car's moving or even standing still. Now my car has a dead pedal to the left, which means I can rest my foot to the left um, and not have it on the clutch. But if your car doesn't have that, then you just have to rest it on the floor. Uh, if you rest your foot on the clutch pedal like this, even gently, uh, that can damage the clutch uh, in a few ways. That can damage the throw out bearing. Uh, we won't get too technical, but try not to do it too much. <clears throat> People say, when I'm slowing down, when do I put in the clutch? Well, I'll give you an example of that. If you're driving in third gear, uh, you're just driving along and you start coming to a stop, you want to start putting the clutch in when your revs really start getting towards the bottom of the tachometer. When it, they really start getting low, you'll start to hear the car maybe, if they get very low, you'll start to hear the car maybe chug a little bit, like it will sort of start maybe juddering a little bit. At that point, just put the clutch in and you can come to a stop, no worries. There's no worries about putting in the clutch and trying again. So if you miss a gear, you go for third instead of fifth gear, put the clutch straight in, and then just put the gear back where you want it to be. So, a lot of people ask about steering position as well. Uh, steering position really is very simple. When you're driving straight, you keep both hands on the wheel and keep them at the nine and three positions. There's little gaps for your thumbs to go, put your thumbs inside there, hold onto the wheel, and you'll be absolutely fine. You don't have to death grip the wheel, you don't have to be like uh, and never let go. Fairly, fairly firm, but a medium grip, you know how it is. Uh, and then when you turn the wheel, this is really up to you. Uh, a lot of driving schools will tell you to do the shuffle thing where you do this. Um, I don't like that personally. Uh, I'm more of a fan of the sort of more racing style where you cross your arms over. Um, I feel you have more control that way, but it is just up to your preference. When you're drive, passing your driving test, you might have to do this technique uh, where you shuffle the wheel. But my personal favorite is the movement where you cross your arms over like so. I just feel you have more contact with the wheel at all times. 
um, and it's my personal preference, but it is up to you. A lot of people argue when you come to a stop, you need to keep the car in gear with the clutch in, uh, so that if you need to get away, you can do so quickly. If you need to do any emergency maneuvers, then you can. Uh, but I'd say it depends on the situation. So, for example, when you come to a stop, you can just get on the brake, put the clutch in, and let the car come to a stop and keep the car in gear so that if the traffic lights turn green, for example, all you need to do is release the clutch with a bit of throttle and you're away. Then you can brake and stop again and do so. So if you're in stop and start traffic, that's generally the way to go. But if you're at a set of traffic lights that you know is gonna be red for a while, put the car in neutral, give it a bit of a waggle to test if it's out of gear and release the clutch. And then you can put your foot on the dead pedal as well, if you've got one, and it's very nice, easy. One thing to really avoid is thrashing the car when you don't need to, uh, especially when it's cold. Uh, give the car five minutes to warm up. If you have to go straight away, don't rev the car too high. Try and shift as short as you can. Um, and you don't need to bring the car to red line, especially when it's cold. You just don't need to do it. But guys, uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. I hope you got something out of it. Even if you are starting to learn to drive, you already know how to drive. I hope you got something out of it and you enjoyed it. I will see you guys in the next video where we're going to be moving on to some more advanced techniques. And let me know what you want to see next. I'd love to do videos where I do track day etiquette, racing, racing techniques, all that sort of thing. I'd love to eventually get into that. So let me know if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and I will see you soon. Drive safe and have an amazing day. Peace.